Hello everybody and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and welcome back to our Spain Legendary Difficulty Campaign featuring Brother Monroe's Dreadnought Improvements Project uh, mod. Our first ever modded playthrough on the channel. Before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and read you guys a little little sum sum, a little flavor text for you guys from the previous stream. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. As the summer sun beats down upon the azure waters of the Mediterranean, the winds of war continue to blow fiercely between the ancient rivals of Spain and Italy. July of 1894 marks a pivotal moment in the struggle for dominance, a tale of bravery, sacrifice, and the relentless pursuit of victory. In the opening skirmishes of this conflict, the Spanish light cruiser Legera proved her mettle striking the first blow against the enemy in a daring one-on-one -on -one showdown. But as this battle escalated, our fleet found itself ensnared in the iron grip of the Italian Navy, facing overwhelming odds and treacherous waters. Yet amidst the chaos and the carnage, one vessel stood tall, the pride of the Spanish Armada, the Queen Anne's Revenge. With her brave crew of cadets and her impenetrable armor, she weathered the storm of enemy fire, emerging as a beacon of hope and defiance in the face of adversity. Through the smoke and the thunder of cannon fire, the Queen Anne's revenge carved a path of destruction through the heart of the enemy fleet, sinking heavy cruisers and light cruisers alike with precision and ferocity. Though battered and bruised, she emerged from the crucible of combat as a symbol of Spanish resilience and naval supremacy. And so, as the sun sets on another day of battle, the Spanish Empire stands tall. Her resolve unbroken, her legacy forged in the crucible of war. For those hallowed seas, where empires rise and fall, it is the courage and the valor of her sailors that shall ensure Spain's rightful place among the great maritime powers of the world. There you go, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I've never done this before, so coming up with these scripts to, uh, to like, read out at the beginning, kind of recapping things. I hope, it, I hope it's a nice little change. So uh, it gives us a nice little recap of what happened in the previous episode, as well as adding a little bit more flavor to, to the uh, campaign. So hopefully you guys are enjoying. Let's see who we got in chat. We got Dewan, X3, Birdman, uh, Eli, Capri, Kevin, Aiden, Gaspaccio, Rogue, Appreciate you guys all dropping in. Heath, welcome. Let's get this party started. All right, let's go. All right, so again, we are going to be struggling early on in this campaign. First of all, we don't have crew that are very well trained. Second of all, every single loss that we take, and in the first, uh, first major battle of the war, we lost two ships. And uh, a third suffered a lot of uh, a lot of extra damage. Fortunately, the Queen's and or the Queen Anne's Revenge was not among the uh, the highly damaged. It did take some superficial damage, but it can be repaired very quickly and be back on the ocean in no time flat. Uh, we do have some new stuff coming out. Uh, our new heavy cruisers are here, so that's good news for us. They will be uh, joining the fleet soon enough. Uh, but our goal for this, this particular episode is going to be simple. Uh, we need to continue to put the pressure on the Spanish, or not the Spanish, but on the Italian Navy and uh, sink as many of them as humanly possible. That is our goal. Uh, now, obviously, we are struggling. We only have a single light cruiser with us, the Buena Ventura and the Queen Anne's Revenge, both of which have suffered significant damage from the previous battle, so we are actually going to send them home to Mallorca to be repaired. And that will leave, unfortunately, our fleet that's down here all by its lonesome, uh, the Espana, the Inquisitor, and the Navarras. Uh, we are going to have to uh, do everything in our power to continue to put the pressure on them and not allow them to just 
teleport away from us, hopefully. So, uh, Jeff coming in with 10 gifted memberships. Thank you for the $10 bomb, my guy. Get some goats in the chat for him. Scar, how's it going? Luke, appreciate you. Me, hi. I apologize. I don't remember. I don't know how to say your name correctly, but uh, I, I I do try. I'll just call you... Uh, I'll just call you M. How about that? I'll just call you M. <laughs> appreciate you dropping in. But uh, let's get this party started. Don't forget to get a goat in the chat for Mr. Jeff. Appreciate you. Mind Warp as well. Good to see you. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm looking forward to this. We are behind in technology. We are struggling financially. We have uh, six battleships currently, nine heavy cruisers and 11 light cruisers. But um, we, do, we do not have the money to be able to sustain a huge fleet currently. Um, though we are slightly making a little bit of money. I do want to take something, take a look at something, uh, because we should be able to build a light or a battle cruiser now. So I want to check out what the battle cruisers look like currently, and see if we can't build some of them. So uh, our battle cruiser one hull. I mean, this is a, an older. Is, I mean, it looks way better than anything we currently have. So I'm interested to see how this is going to play out. Uh, but yeah, let's let's see what we can do in terms of building a battle cruiser for us. Um, we can max this out, I believe. So that's 22,500 tons. It is capable of being up to 24 and a half knots. So I think we are going to do that. I mean, let's go for just a straight 24 knot battle cruiser. Um, I don't know how well this will work, but we're going to try, right? So main tower will be the advanced tower two. Throw that in there. The secondary tower will be the rear tower five. Uh, that seems kind of cra or kind of cracked for what it is, but uh, we'll try to get away with it. Put that there. Funnels wise, I highly doubt that we have any sort of like efficiency out of this ship. That is going to be something that's definitely going to be a problem. This gives us twenty one. Can't get that in there. It gets us 43% engine efficiency out of this battle cruiser. Not ideal. But that gives us a range of 9,600 kilometers as well. Oh, so I said Mihai correctly? Well, well awesome. I thought yesterday you said that wasn't correct. But uh, Rogue coming in re-upping for 14 months. Thank you so much. Just the accent is off. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Why cat? How's it going? Um, it is currently 1894, so it's very early for a battle cruiser for sure. But uh, that just owes to the or owes to the the ingenuity of the Spanish fleet. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do with it. It's gonna be a very early battle cruiser, of course. It's probably not gonna be great, but uh, we're gonna try anyway. So main guns for this battle cruiser, uh, we've been using a lot of 10 inch guns. Um, I'm wondering if we get away with the 10 inch guns, all right, we can do uh wing turrets. Hold that thought. Right there. The 10 inch guns at least proved that they were capable of being useful. And so being able to put more of these on seemed like a good idea. Now this thing will not have secondaries. So this thing will have to keep its distance for sure. But it, what it lacks in secondaries is going to make up for hopefully. Um, I lied. We're not going to be able to do a barbette, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think these will work for uh, Barbette. Well, I mean, I can try it, but I doubt it works. Yeah, that's not gonna, that's not gonna cut it. So yeah, I think we'll have to put like a 10 inch gun there, 10 inch gun there. And we could potentially go ahead and put another 10 inch gun.
and then use a side gun, technically. I think that's correct looks lined up all right now we could put some secondaries along here possibly let's see what we can do with that um let's go ahead and do that that compound armor and this is driving me crazy hold it hold that hold the thought only here in the game out of one one ear it's driving me crazy uh, what up, John? How's it going, Jordan? Appreciate you dropping in. You're going to eat some ragu pasta? Nice. All right, what can we do in terms of casemates? I think we can throw some two-inch casemates on. They're not really going to do a whole lot. But having a little bit of a little bit of extra firepower to keep some things at bay, not the worst. Uh, and then, of course, we can throw some uh, secondaries along the uh, sides of this thing. Maybe I don't know if we get five-inch guns on here. Oh yeah, we can totally get five-inch guns on here. Okay, throw a couple of these five-inch guns in here for good measure. So it's not a lot of secondaries, but it, it should at least give us some sit back a little bit. You know, five inch guns should be pretty solid for secondaries. Um, that's a lot of firepower for the mains. That's for sure. Um, engine efficiency is terrible as you'd expect. Let's go with uh, gun cotton. Um, we're going to have the enhanced reloading. We are overweight now, but that's to be expected. Um, Let's go with base fuse HE, please. Uh, let's go standard ratio with maximum HE for the secondaries. All right. So, yeah, this thing does not have a lot of armor. But it is a battle cruiser, so it's not meant to have a lot of armor. But what it does bring is a lot of firepower, which I think we all know that we need. So, yeah. We're going we're gonna to make sure that we have plenty of firepower. Okay, so five and a half inch armor on the sides. One and a half. Okay, let's go with a 10 inch barbette. That gets us under the limit there in terms of our overall weight. Um, kind of want to go with a four inch there, maybe two inch there. Two inch there. Three inches of casemate armor is fine. Go with a two inch top casemate. All right. Now, as much as I want to be able to do this at 24 knots, I think we might actually have to re drop that back a little bit. So let's bring this back to like 22 knots. Okay, 23 knots is apparently the, the minimum. I don't know why that keeps doing that. So apparently 23 knots is the minimum. So we'll go with a 23 knot battle cruiser and see if we can't throw some armor on this thing. Um, Citadel should be decently protected. I'm not too worried about that. Let's go with the seven inch there. We have a slight four weight offset, but it's not that bad. Uh, it's probably because the four deck ended up having a little bit extra armor. Um, Let's drop that down just a little bit and then let's add some armor Can we go like three inches okay five inches okay 10 inch armor belts a little much nine gets us pretty close we have nine inch armor belt with a five inch fore and aft belt um, I am going to increase the length of the uh, two-inch guns a little bit. 
That should help them reach a little bit further out. It's not going to be much. Per Michael, thank you for the 10 months, my guy. What up, Jessica? How's it going? All right. Um, let's go with a little bit more superstructure armor if we can. Okay, that puts us a little over the limit. Let's drop the conning tower armor down a little bit. Okay, we're still just a little bit too much. Drop it down to maybe five inches. Okay. Um, drop a little bit of deck armor and then we can add a little bit more here. So six inches, nope, six inches is too much. So 5.14 and a half armor belt with a main belt that's nine inches. Um, it should be okay. It's not It's not a crazily armored ship. It's a battle cruiser. It's decently quick at 20, 23 knots uh, for a capital ship is pretty, pretty insane. This will cost $86 million to build though. So uh, that's going to be a problem. Um, this will probably be a home water sort of situation. I doubt that this will be something that we can build like more than one of. It will take 17 months to build. I would like to build one for each each uh, area of influence. So three, three fleets total. Um, but at a cost of 86.4 million, I don't know that we're going to be able to. So uh, what do you guys got for me in terms of a name for this absolute beast? I like Hermione, actually. A little Harry Potter reference. What do you guys got for me? Drop the range. Oh, yeah, the range is a little high. You're not wrong. So we can definitely do that. That'll save us some weight, too. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. That saves us quite a bit of weight, actually. Good call. Okay. So we can definitely get away with, uh, like, 10 inches there. Uh, let's go with like seven inches, seven inches. Good call on the range, by the way, especially early on. Um, that allows us to add some more deck armor as well. Can we get a two inch deck? All right, this actually is looking pretty pretty juicy all right uh so we have a two inch deck five inch conning tower two inch superstructure we have seven inch fore and aft belt we can we can bring that up probably nine inches holy crap okay we can bring that up even more this thing's gonna be a tank <laughs> good lord i didn't think this thing was gonna be that good but uh lord have mercy this thing gonna be a monster with this much firepower, the fact that it's going to be able to, like, absolutely crush. Like, what is our turning circle, though? That That's going to be potentially a problem. Do, do, do. Turning circle of 1,253 meters. Yeah, that's not ideal. Let's, uh, let's go with a unbalanced rudder. That reduces our turning circle quite a bit. Down below a thousand meters now. Now we have a turning circle that's equivalent to an Iowa class battleship. Which is not good, especially with the torpedoes. But early on, the torpedoes are pretty short range, so we should be able to outrange most of the uh, people that we fight. Okay, well, um, let's go. Can we go 12 inches here? Oh, we totally can. Holy crap. This thing's going to be a freaking tank. Okay, that's that's the part that's the that draws the line, right? All right, let's drop that back down. Okay. So a two inch superstructure, three inch fore aft and main deck, 11 inch fore and aft belt with a 12 inch main belt. I mean, this thing, if you thought the Queen Anne's Revenge was gonna be a beast, this thing gonna be insane. 
Like, this thing could probably single-handedly take out whatever comes up against it, assuming it can hit the target, which is a big assumption. Isabella? Okay. Can the Setsuma overmatch it? Um... No. If it's got a four belt, the four belt would be an extended belt that goes all the way up to the bow here at the waterline. So the four belt would be 11 inches thick. So it would have an icebreaker to rival pretty much anything out there. That would be armor that's 11 inches thick is probably 283 millimeters thick. I thought this was Wad Not World of Tank Lowell. Name the inevitable. Name it the inevitable. Okay. I mean, that's fair. Thank you, Jess. Appreciate you. All right. So it will be the inevitable class. Uh, so I would like to build three of these. Um, but can I build three of these? That's the question. I don't think so. I think I'm only going to be able to build like one. Satsuma has 510 millimeter guns, so around 20 inches, I believe. No. Oh, the the guns themselves. Yeah, I, I'm I'm just saying like. What, what it could overmatch. Take 510 and divide it by 14.3, and that gives you what it can overmatch. And that's millimeters. And considering this thing has an 11-inch belt, it ain't getting overmatched. The, the deck plating is 3 inches, right? All right, let's build one of these. $5.2 million right there, like immediately. Dude. We are struggling. All right, this will be Barcelona for sure. Seventeen months. All right, let's go. Next turn. Yeah, our research is absolutely abysmal because we just don't, we can't afford it. All right, next turn. Let's see what happens. Can. What up, Captain Rob? How's it going? Lances. Welcome. Am I excited for subs coming out? Yeah, it's April Fool's, so... Uh... All right, we got another fight here. Um, it is our light cruisers and a heavy cruiser versus a group of heavy or a group of light cruisers. So not an ideal scenario for sure. Um, let's go ahead and withdraw for now. Two Inquisitor class heavy cruisers, you're willing to pay me 8.9 million right up front. Total profit of 93%. So they'll pay a total of 60 million when they're complete. Let's go ahead and do that. It gives us a little influx of cash, but we are we are hemorrhaging money quite quite badly. Um 
see. This convoy is Navara versus Light Cruisers. It's not ideal, but we will go into battle and see what we can do. We got to try to protect our transports. Cisco, thank you for 14 months, my dude. Appreciate you. And welcome to the stream. All right, enemies spotted to the east, so right off our bow, essentially. Come on, Navara. We need you to... Uh, be useful. You don't have any torpedoes, but hopefully, hopefully you can step up and smash them with your eight-inch guns. Now, the thing we got to worry about here is getting encircled like we did in the previous. So we're going to slow down. Go ahead and turn. to drop our speed a little bit, make it a little bit easier for our guys to aim. That was a good four inch hit. Destroyed one of the main guns. Be nice if we could get these guns to actually hit something. We don't have the firing angle to hit this guy, so the guns are automatically targeting that guy. As long as we keep our distance here and don't get surrounded, that would be ideal. We should have enough armor to tank most of this. Fires are going to be a problem, potentially. Huge hit. There we go. a little closer than I feel comfortable with, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, let's turn away. Speed up a little bit. Another big hit. Trying to keep our distance here. What are you shooting at? Would you target the same person instead of targeting anything else?
All right, this guy's capable of 14 knots, so we're actually a little bit faster than they are. Which is good, because that's going to help us, like, get out of trouble. Another good hit. That was an overpin, unfortunately. I'm going to try the HE and see what that does. Many. That was a partial pin. So yeah, definitely not as good. Come on, Navarra. Try to close in a little bit. Flash fire. Oh, we start targeting. That's our first kill. Well done. Trying to keep the guns on target as best we can. Just outside two kilometers at the moment. Next shot should be pretty juicy. It's actually an overpin, which is interesting. We are taking some losses in terms of our crew, but it's not too terrible. Two overpins. Now that he's turning away, it'll be interesting to see if we do hit him, how much damage we get. Okay, so we're gonna miss. Switch targets. Inside one and a half kilometers. What up, Tragic Blue? How's it going? Appreciate you, my dude. Seven percent chance to hit here, and both shots were a swing and a miss. That figures.
Yeah, we're overpinning him, which is unfortunate. I think we're just going to go ahead and pull away. We've done our job, we've successfully led them away from the uh, enemy, or the friendly transports. So we've protected our transports, we've sank one of them in the process, we've damaged others. As soon as they stop firing, we'll go ahead and disengage. All right. All right, so we did lose 57 crew. They lost 300, including a light cruiser. So that's a win for us. 2,100 victory points. We'll take it. I'll take it. Why is the quality so low? That's got to be on your end there, liquor store. What up, Radioactive? Good to see you. Yeah, I stream at 1080p, 60 frames. All right, we have a convoy over here as well. So again, we're going to go ahead and take this fight, I guess, try to thin them out a little bit, if we can. What up, Ave? Good to see you. Liquor store as well. I think I already called liquor store because he's the one saying the it's so low. guys get with me speed up time enemy is spotted right off our bow okay so this is our our uh, pre-built or our AI designed heavy cruiser. It only has 7.1 inch guns, so it might actually be better at killing these light cruisers than our previous ship. We'll see. And then of course we have our light cruisers in the back here that are running, what, four inch guns? But the light cruisers do have torpedoes and so does our heavy cruiser here. biggest worry right now is that these guys are very close to our transports so we have to put ourselves in a position to stop them from being able to attack the transports at all costs at least give our transports a chance to uh, disengage
you can see they are starting to take out transports. We took a hit and took a torpedo detonation immediately. Boy, if it only worked like that for the uh, enemy when they take hits. It seems like I always have torpedo detonations on my ships and they never do. There's a huge hit. That was massive. All right, switch targets. I think that one's gonna die. Seems to be filling up with water pretty badly. Nice. First kill. Catalonia. Well done. Good hit and destroyed his torpedo. Still has plenty more where that came from. And of course, we have a torpedo detonation. Torpedoes in the water from our cruisers. Huge. Down he goes. Isabel, look out. Oh my god, dude. I think Isabel's toast. What are you doing, transport? Get out the way! Okay, we lost the Isabel. That is highly unfortunate. Attach. You go ahead and retreat. Dude, these torpedoes, man, are no joke. I think we just lost the other light cruiser, too. But we definitely need to do something about these light cruisers. Also, why are our transports not retreating? Why are you guys just sailing right into these guys? Come on now. You know how hard it is to protect you if you're just gonna sail straight into them? Normally they, they spawn in and they retreat. I don't understand why they're, yeah, they're just gonna annihilate all my transports at this point. I think we got that one, so change course, or change target. the Minerva. Dude, these guys are going to sink all my transports if I can't start hitting them sometime quickly here. a seven inch gun. It's not ideal. Dude, they spawned their fucking transports right on top of these guys. And then on top of that, like my transports never tried to retreat. They're just sailing in a straight line right through the freaking formation of light cruisers. It's absurd. What a monkey, how's it going? I have not tried playing enlisted. We're just getting all our ships just blasted. Come on. Hit. 
hit in a flood. There we go. Only one to go. When you, when you take away the disaster that is losing my two light cruisers to torpedoes because they just, like, can't dodge, apparently, and the fact that our, our transports just decided to yellow rush the light cruisers, you take that away, and this has been a very good battle for us because we've killed, like, all of them. Yeah, this is going to be devastating to our economy. That's a lot of transports to lose in one battle. guns, man! Why are we sitting here waiting? I think I know why, but I think it was because that freaking dead friendly ship is in the way. Or was nearby, so the game was like, no. But that should be a kill on the Urania. Beautiful. Wasn't a great battle, but it was one that we win. We, we took out all six of the enemy light cruisers, which is huge. That's 12,000 points, but we lose 19,000 points because of the transports that we lost. Dude, we only had four, four transports escaped. Wait, only one of our light cruisers died? I thought we lost both of our light cruisers. Okay, well, that's not too bad. But they ended up getting a lot of victory points because of the transports. That is not ideal. Yeah, the, that, that little turret cruiser, or heavy cruiser, whatever you want to call it, is actually pretty pretty nasty um, but I think it's mostly because we're overpinning so much against the enemy uh, light cruisers we're losing nine million dollars a month right now which I think we can all agree is not a good thing can confirm not ideal um, Are you guys repairing? Yeah, Queen Anne's Revenge is repairing. All right. Well, um, so eight inch guns are too big to kill the light cruisers quickly. Four inch guns are too small to, to like pin the light cruisers. But by far and away, our biggest issue right now is the fact that we just do not have good crews. All right, well, let's just keep it rolling. See what happens here. Yeah. Nine, nine mil isn't normally a lot. Uh, victims are going to be a thing. Sorry. But there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Two light cruisers versus two light cruisers. Just going to auto resolve that. We sank one, lightly damaged the other. All right, how many ships do they have left? I feel like we've done a pretty good job of thinning them down a little bit. They still have 66 ships. Holy shit. They can sustain their losses a lot longer than we can. We got to stop losing ships, man. Uh... 
Uh, we are definitely going to be struggling. Because I just don't have the money. At least we've got positive naval prestige now. Alright. Next turn. Dr. Marco coming in with the $2. Say a word they always say in Spain. Hola? <laughs> I imagine they say hola a lot. All right, our heavy cruiser Catalunya versus their light cruisers. Again, I like this battle. Catalunya should have a better crew this time. And on top of that, the 7.1 inch guns have proven quite effective against these little cruisers. You thought I said Ola? No, 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 no. Ola, H-O-L-A, Ola. Also, CSI, how's it going? Got USS New Mexico at about 7K XP from SMS Kong. I don't know what that is. That must be a PC thing. All right. Enemy is spotted to the southwest. There's only four of them, so we should be no problem getting rid of these guys. The German... Oh, the Koenig. Or the Koenig. Ah, got you. I was like, the Kong, the only Kong that I know of is the Heat Wave. Yeah, there's an eye in there. All right. As long as we keep our distance, these guys are not going to be able to do much of anything against us, and our guns will tear them apart. We just cannot afford to take torpedoes. Target that guy, please. There we go. Now we're talking, baby. Finally able to hit a freaking target with some sort of, like, consistency. All right, let's slow down a little bit. That's close enough, Sunshine. There we go. Start sizing up the next... Actually, this guy somehow managed to get his flooding under control. Not ideal. Alright, let's change targets to this guy since he's going to be coming towards us. go. 
throw. Good hit right through the bow. We're going to keep firing at, the, at him, though. There we go. It's definitely him gone, so let's go ahead and switch targets. Start working on engaging the next target. Torpedo detonation for them for once. Very nice. Catalonia proven her effectiveness so far. That'll be the end of that light cruiser. Liguria? Are they making fun of our ship? That is way too close to the same name as our, our light cruiser that they killed in the last episode. How dare they? Staying on the edge of being able to be torpedoed here. There we go. Beautiful hit. Down he goes. All right, Catal Catalonia really putting in the work today. Lost 29 crew, but sank four light cruisers. Yeah, Primal was, yeah, Primal was Kong. Yeah, uh, Heat Wave was Godzilla. I don't know why I was thinking it. But yeah, Primal. Primal is Kong. Can I build the World War II class design ships since you progressed a lot in the game? Uh, I can't yet. It's too too early. Too early, unfortunately. Like World War II is 1930s. We're currently in 1980 or 1894. All right, let's go ahead and fix our crew situation. Somebody has low crew. Just going to go ahead and automatically add crew so that I ain't got to worry about that. Still losing $8 million per turn, so I'm actually going to be bankrupt very soon. I think we get a boost of uh, cash here. Two light cruisers. I'm just going to auto resolve that. All right. Well, next turn. There's nothing I can do, man. I don't have the money. close can't even suspend those whoops uh, it's
Okay, that gives us quite a bit of extra money for the moment. So that'll at least keep us from losing in the time being. Boy, trying to trying to deal with the whole financial situation that we got. I'm just going to have to let it let it like actually build up some funds for a little while. What up Zen? Welcome. All right. Um, currently, I mean, we're winning this war, but not by enough that I would like to. Uh, keep going here. Send the Navarro back out. Catalonia. Since we know that these uh, heavy cruisers with 7.1 inch guns are very good against their light cruisers, I'm going to send them out by themselves and try to hunt them down if we can. I feel like we're more likely to get into fights that way. All right, let's keep it going. What up, Grilla? How's it going? Just got the Yama. I've got a lot of videos in the Yama, my dude, if you want to check them out. Um, basically, don't go broadside to anything. Um, learn who has icebreakers and who doesn't so that you know when you can overmatch and when you can't. Um, other than that, just pay attention to torpedo boats. Yama's probably about as easy a battleship as it gets to play. Just can't get caught broadside, ever. It is certain death. Certain death. We set these guys to seek or set these guys to invade. It should allow us. To knock out a lot of their transports. Uh, I'm going to try to build up as much money as we can, uh, because right now that's our biggest, biggest downside. We will continue to try to build that battle cruiser when we can, but for now, we can't. So right now, in terms of our our growth is actually getting our, our GDP is being dropped. We've got a GDP of nine point one billion dollars currently. Army logistics is pretty terrible. All 
All right, well, let's just keep it rolling for now. What up, Jonathan? Welcome to the stream. Glad you enjoyed. Torch Empire, how's it going? Good to see everybody today. Hopefully you guys are enjoying. Don't forget to punch that like button, guys, if you guys are enjoying the stream. Yes, we are at war with Italy as Spain. Um, this gives us 100% profit, but it's going to take time to build them. They're going to give us $12.8 million in advance. We are losing money again. Not ideal. Okay. Um, terms of their, I mean, it's going to be five months, eight months, eight months. I think at this point, I think we go ahead and try to peace out. with the uh, Italians. It's a short war. It didn't quite go the way we wanted to, uh, but it should still be a minor victory for the, uh, the Spanish at this point. And gives us some good crew experience. We learned quite a bit about the mod this way as well, like uh, how, how things play out. So we've, we've got some ideas for the future and how we get, we can continue but uh, we definitely need to do some more building up so hopefully hopefully the italians are down for a peace treaty uh that should also give us a nice little influx of cash as well it's probably not going to be crazy because it's only a, a very small victory but hey victory is victory right uh, the objective of this is not to capture any territory. It's simply to, um, show the world that, that we are not going to be taken lightly. Um, we're going to rebuild our fleets. Uh, we, we are coming. That, that's, that's our goal. Uh, we can get a nice little injection of cash by beating, uh, or winning this war against Italy. Um, also giving our, our Navy some training when it comes to fighting, um, and basically a sea trials for a lot of uh, what we're, we're going to be doing. Um, learning what the, the new, because we are playing our first ever modded playthrough. So I wasn't sure what to expect when it comes to combat. Uh, what, what is effective, what is not effective. Armor seems to be a lot more effective in this mod. Uh, so we will, we will keep that in mind. And we will definitely be taking advantage of that. If we can. They denied peace for now. We'll see if that holds out. All right, let's uh, move you. You know, we don't really have enough tonnage to, to do any naval invasions or anything just yet um, because our navy is split up between the Caribbean, the Mediterranean, and then the uh, Philippines, a.k.a. Asia. So. For now, it's all about trying to survive get some training where we can, test out what works, what doesn't, and then get a little bit of extra cash for winning the war because they will have to pay us reparations. What up, Ghost? Dart68, welcome. Um, I agree to peace.
All right, so we're officially at peace. Uh, I could take Italian uh, smaller land. I will definitely be going for that. That's more money for us as well as, as new territory. And we take it. Beautiful. So we actually get some, some new land as well. That's huge. That is huge. So now we own this down here, which is going to be a nice little injection of cash, hopefully. Uh, we can send our, our fleets home. Okay. I don't think we have anybody else that's by themselves currently. Should just be the two fleets that are at sea. So yeah, get everybody everybody back to their uh, place they're meant to be. Set them to limited. So we currently have $40 million in the bank. We are losing $7.7 .7 million per turn, but as soon as we get these fleets back home and limited, uh, that shouldn't be too bad. It is currently January of 1895. Noriko coming in with the 2CHF. Where is, where is Aventador and happy B-Day? Uh, we don't have Aventador, but uh, welcome. And happy B-Day to your channel. All right, so that's that's kind of big. Uh, we do want to probably take some people over that direction, actually. So maybe we take... I want to keep those guys nearby. Maybe we send these light cruisers down to uh, Mogadishu. Seems like a good idea. That way we have some people there to protect our... Uh, our interests. This will allow us to rebuild our transport capacity as well. Um, hopefully, yeah, we're back to growing our, our economy. So that's, oh wait, that's them. We're still losing our economy. So let's hope we can get that turned around. Uh, unrest is under control. The naval prestige is, is at least in the positive. So the People don't hate me completely. But yeah, we are struggling for money, man. For reals. All right, let's try to get this maxed out again up 200%. Uh, as soon as we do, then we can back that off to maintain the fleet and then keep trying to get this. Yeah, we've been behind on tech because of the lack of money. Like, we need, we need money. So, uh, it is what it is. Not much we can do about it. We are going to start getting some money from uh, these ships getting built. So, that's good news for us. It's a good way for us to supp supplement our income is by building ships for other uh, allies. Currently, we only have the one, though, and that's Sweden. So, hopefully Sweden buys a bunch of ships from us. Have a good night, Gorilla. Appreciate you dropping in, man. All right, so the fleets, I mean, everybody should be good to go. So we're going to go ahead and set everybody to limited. Now we're making money again. We finished building these. Uh, then maybe we can go back to... Like if if we resume this, that's going to be a lot of money lost, right? That's three point two million dollars per month lost. It should be okay. I think I think it's fine. Let's just get it get it building. Invade Portugal. I mean, if it pops up, oof. 
a Queen Anne's Revenge class battleship. They will pay 25% in advance, which is $9.7 million, and a total profit of 85%, so $62 million total for one battleship. I mean, yeah, I guess we can do that. We're going to lose some more money in the meantime, but that's going to be a nice, nice profit for us overall. We're at 190% here. So let's actually go ahead and drop this down a little bit. We'll still be growing, but that'll save us some money in the meantime. Still building our crew pool up a little bit if we can. Okay. Uh, from a politics standpoint, I mean, the United States is still... Okay, they're actually not as, as hated against us right now, so that's good. So that, that has cooled down a little bit. So hopefully that stays like that for a little bit. Keep it going. How can I be very behind in tech? It's, it's tech level mostly. So like, yes, we do have battle cruisers technically, but... Uh, we don't have a lot of the other stuff that other nations are getting because they have a better financial situation. Uh, has decreased tax income. The government wants to cut the Navy's budget. What is your reaction? Oh my God, I don't want to lose more budget, man. This reduces unrest. We don't really need that. It also reduces my naval prestige, which I don't want. This... Um, That's rough, man. That's going to be $7.3 million and cutting our budget by 1.5%. Gives us a little bit of naval prestige. This is unacceptable. I mean, that gives us minus 3 prestige, but also plus 3 unrest. All right, well, our Navy belongs to the country and its people, so it, it's ready to give its share for the common good. We'll go ahead and do that. That gives us zero unrest, so we've at least settled down the, the like, unrest overall, which is good because we just got this, pre or this territory here, too. So hopefully that'll help bring in a little bit of extra money over time. Um, once, I, I forget what year the Philippines discover oil, but that'll be huge for us once that happens. Um, yeah, who knows? Maybe if we get into a war with... Uh, I mean, the Italians are looking to take Ethiopia now. And I don't know how they're managing it, considering they have 67,000 troops and the enemy has 101,000 defending. All right, how are we looking... So we currently have, uh, our, our, our economy is growing, so that's good, finally. So we're getting that back up. That'll be huge for us. Um, crew pool is still being worked on. 8% army logistics is awful. Um, army force is up to 439,000 total, so still not the smallest. So, yep, yeah, should be good there. Um, we did just finish building some, uh, or no, we build two more bat or two more heavy cruisers next month. So we should get a nice little influx of cash for that. So we're currently at 58 million and now we're at 113 million because we sold those ships. So that's good. What up Kiefer? How's it going? Hey, oh, Rocco. Good to see you, my dude. Hey, what are the odds? <laughs> what are the We just talked about this. Natural oil has been uh, discovered in the Spanish Empire's West Philippines. Oh, my God. What a, what a great day this is. Uh, let's see, 68%. That'll be $55 million. Yeah, let's go ahead and hit that. 
that was good timing. <laughs> what are the odds? So yeah, we, we managed to get some oil discovered. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That'll be a nice little influx of cash for us. I know you said it. I saw I saw what you said. But it is funny that I just brought I just brought it up. I was like, I know we eventually get some oil there. That'll be nice. Also, I want to point out that you you got it. You you said it was 1896. It's currently May of 1895. So ha. Huh. Huh. Leave it to me to find oil early. It's like, oh, give me give me all the oil, please. I think we're doing pretty good so far. I mean, yeah, we're struggling, but cash will come over time. We know this. It's just a matter of time. So four months until the rest of these heavy cruisers are built for Sweden. And then we've got a few months each for these battleships. Um, and our battle cruiser will be built before these actually get finished. So we're still, we're still okay. Keep it going. As long as we can keep turning a profit and keep the naval funds increasing, despite the fact that we're technically spending more money than we're making monthly, um, I like our odds. It's just going to take time. You reported a player in Planet Crash for not helping. That's uh, honestly, it's it's a waste of time. Um, during a foreign visit in France, our finance minister received a. Would you guys stop hitting my guy in the head? Our government wants to organize an international regatta to promote the mutual understanding at sea between all countries. Uh, that's probably a good thing, but God, it's so expensive, man. I mean, it's a good thing because it, it helps promote good things between other nations, but at the same time, it's so expensive. All right, we're going for it. Make it happen. You would like a inevitable class battle cruiser. I bet you would. So you'll pay me 24 million now and the rest for an 85% profit. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a get it done. Now we're moving we're losing 10 million dollars a turn. So that's 13 months potentially worth of things. Yeah, that should be fine. Should be fine. Let's uh, make sure that everybody's limited again, because I think those light cruisers should be home by now. That'll save us a little bit of money, but not a lot. These guys are still pushing. So it looks like Italy may end up taking Ethiopia. And again, it would be nice if our government would decide to take some of these other, other nations as well, like Morocco or Mauritania. You know, be nice. All right. Keep it going. Yeah, but I just know this game launches. I understand how in real life that would work, but I'm just saying, like, I know this game, and the fact that these guys have a smaller force attacking a defense force and winning is kind of hilarious. Boy, we are... Hemorrhaging money, though. 
the early game's always the worst. Like try trying to like get everything set up to where you're actually gonna start making money is always the hardest. So next month we should end up getting a nice influx of cash from the three heavy cruisers that we're building. Yeah, we're going to keep keep going. Colonial Conquest. The Antilla's new leader was found to support armed terrorists. Uh, yeah. Where, where's this at? Over here in uh, the Caribbean. Okay. How much do we need? We need 9,700 tons. So we should have our fleet here at uh, Santiago. Let's just send the fleet down. That'll be some new land for us, potentially. The Dutch Antillas. See how that goes. All right, uh, so next month we should get an influx of cash from these three. So we're currently at 115. Now we're at $190 million. And now they want a couple of light cruisers too. Dude, Sweden, you can keep ordering all the ships you want while I'm not at war. Like you, you can have all the ships you could ever ask for. Okay, we currently only have a 39% chance to, to succeed here though. That I'm not a big fan of. But there's no way I would get there in time with anything else. Like, we don't have anything else, right? Ooh, I lied. These guys could get there. They can get there next month. I, I, I forgot we had two fleets here. Beautiful. So, they can get in there, and uh, hopefully we'll get this captured. That'll be another another territory for us. B E A beautiful. All right, eight months for the light cruisers to finish being built. Ten months for the new heavy cruiser. Seven months for our battle cruiser, and then a little bit of everything from there. Uh, politics wise, how are we doing? We're up to a six point three percent growth. We're up above ten billion dollars in GDP, so that's nice. Let's keep it going. No doubt that our shipyards are contributing big or majorly to that. Long live death. Nice. Kind of reminds me of uh, Game of Thrones. The Empire of Japan and the Italian Empire is now at war? <laughs> Interesting. That sounds familiar. Yeah, so they're about to take this um, with our new fleet there as well. How are we doing? 87%. I like those odds much better. So next month we should take that. That'll be nice. From a finance standpoint, crew pool, I need to, I need to make that a little bit more. I need to get our crew pool up. So we're going to spend a little extra money to get the crew pool up. Um, tech budget. I mean, I, I'd like to make more here, but that's $20 million per turn that we're losing. Um, hmm.
just keep this going a little bit. We can reduce that a little bit. Let's reduce this a little bit. All right, $17 million loss per turn. Not gonna lie, this this campaign might go a little bit faster than previous campaigns, just due to the fact that we're gonna spend a lot of time early on, um, just kind of speeding through things, because we're not gonna be at war. We failed to control. See, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. I'm so goddamn annoyed at that. Like we put two fleets there for th with an 87 percent chance to take it, and we failed. Ah! God darn it, game. Well, that was a waste of money. 87% chance to take it. We failed. So annoying. Ah. <sighs> All right, six months. Let's just keep it going. Uh, yeah, there are no subs in the game. It's first of all, it's too early, and I think uh, secondly, I think they stopped. Um, I think Brother Monroe took the f the subs mechanic out of the game, subs and mines. So, I don't think we'll have to worry about that. Military awareness is spreading across the world. The government wishes to demonstrate our power by conducting naval exercises close to the German Empire's waters. What is your opinion? Um, that's a lot of money to throw away for no reason. It does increase our prestige a little bit, but I don't really care about that. So it doesn't look like we're like just act more carefully. Can you can you not piss everybody off, please? Fifteen point eight million dollars. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm sorry. Yep, we're going to do it. Large industrialists pr proposed a redistribution of government's budget in favor of the industrial sector at the expense of the Army and Navy budgets. What is your reaction? Um, I mean, getting the GDP is always going to be a good thing, so let's just go for it. A couple of light cruisers built. Yep. Keep going. Losing $20 million per turn. But we're building a lot of ships for uh, Sweden. So that'll be a lot of money once they get built. Plus the inevitable will be built in four months. So that'll be nice. That thing's going to be a monster. Keep it going. Yeah, we're, we're completely broke. Let's go ahead and uh, go piss off the Germans by spending a bunch of money and doing naval exercises off their border. Stop choosing things that cost money. Well, some things cost things that are worse than money, which is like unrest uh, and naval prestige, which I'm in shortness of. So building up my naval prestige is going to help. And then also trying to limit the amount of unrest that we have is, is going to be big too. We're starting to get high unrest again due to the fact that we're losing money all the time. 
Dude, everybody hates us. Why does everybody hate us? Whoo, we're in trouble in the near future if this keeps going. Why does everybody hate us? I understand why the U.S. hates us. I can, I can understand why the Germans hate us. But why do the French hate us? Why do the Russians hate us? Why do the Chinese hate us? I don't. I didn't do anything to them. This is about to get real interesting in the near future, if I had to guess. Four months left for a couple of light cruisers to be built. Six months, four months. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to get some money coming in here soon. Just whether or not we survive long enough for it to happen. I don't know why everybody hates us. It's not my fault. All right, let's go ahead and drop our crew training budget down a little bit. About a million dollars. And then drop tech budget down to about a million dollars. Oh, this is rough. Boy, this is probably even harder than the Italian campaign was in terms of starting. Like, you just have no budget. So building up that GDP is, is kind of important. Uh, taking away our uh, Navy budget to build up the GDP is only going to help us in the long term. So it just, it's one of those things. It's like all these little choices that I make now are going to stack as we start to get bigger. We just got to live long enough for that to happen. And for those of you who are like asking why I'm losing so much money, it's because I'm building all these ships. But all of these ships that we're building, we're going to make a profit on. So all of the money that we're spending, where it looks like we're losing money, is going to be a net gain shortly. The only one that we're building that isn't going to be a, a pot or like a, a profit is our own inevitable. And it's almost done. So one more month and it'll be finished. That'll be like $5 million a month less that we're spending. But all of these other ones, I mean, this is a huge amount of cash that we're going to get from these ships that we're sailing. So, I don't mind spending money to make money, you know? Remember, we were at like 170 million recently. We've dropped a lot of that. But watch where we end up after we sell all these ships. I bet it's more than 170 million. So selling all these ships is, is only going to be a good thing in the as we go forward. So here's two ships that are finishing up this month. Uh, we also have a battleship that's finishing this month. So we're at $54 million currently. Watch what happens now. Uh, actually, before we do that, let me make sure that inevitable. Uh, it's in limited. Okay, that's fine. Beautiful. All right. $54 million. Now with one battleship and a, and a light cruiser... Suddenly, we're up to $110 million. Make sense? And we're losing less money now. Now, we also still have five light cruisers being built that will come out over the next couple of months. Uh, we have the heavy cruiser that will come out in a couple of months. We have the, heavy, or the battleship San Justo that uh, will come out in two months. So that'll be another big influx of cash. And then, of course, we have the Aranzazu. Six months. And that'll be a huge influx of cash. So we're going to be over $200 million in our naval funds solely from selling ships. I, I pretty much guarantee it. And this is how we have to make money early on. Because we just don't have the GDP to support a large navy at all. So selling ships is all we can do. Yeah, and doing good things for our country. 
But it looks like other countries are starting to uh, hate us less. They're starting to reach out and say, hey, look, we understand you guys are struggling. I don't want to piss you off right now. So, you're, you know, they're, they're starting to cool off a little bit, which is good. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely worried about the French and the U.S. deciding to piss, you know, fuck with us. Because that would be very, very detrimental to our growth at the moment. Especially the French, because they have the, uh, they have the ability to reach everywhere that we are and completely de decimate our transports, which would be absolutely devastating to our economy. Which would be awful. So I think we are going to try to strengthen relations with France if we can. Spend a little bit of that, um... To do good things. Alright. So just below $97 million now. And suddenly we're at $172 million. Selling ships is profitable. What up, Uncle Stir Fry? How's it going? Yeah, and that's the other thing. Like, growing your economy early on is so difficult, especially when you start with nothing like we did with the Spain. Like, our economy is terrible. But if we can grow the economy, once it starts to get, like, more and more, like, it'll just snowball from there. So just constantly building ships for, for our ally. Dude, Sweden's going to have such a large navy, it's actually silly. Like they currently have two heavy cruisers, a light cruiser there. They have a battleship, three heavy cruisers, four light cruisers there. They have a battleship, two heavy cruisers, and a light cruiser there. They have two light cruisers up there. Like Sweden's going to have a massive navy. And it's all built by Spain. We'll take it. Uh, we, did, we did successfully reduce our um, tensions with France as well, so that's good. So that actually increased our naval or our naval prestige. Um, I'm also going to try to again improve relations with the United States if we can. I don't want to spend. I don't want to do this all the time because I feel like it it then increases its odds to to like backfire on us, and that costs us naval prestige because they essentially laugh at us. So we don't want that. But. Four more months until the battle cruiser gets built. That'll be a huge amount of money coming in. And then, of course, we've got next month, we've got these light cruisers being built. So that'll be a nice little chunk of money. And see, yeah, we failed. We failed to improve relations with the U.S., so, uh, yeah, they, they've decided to uh, laugh at us, which costs us naval prestige, which is not ideal. Not ideal. All right. So, 477 there, and then three more months until the battlecruiser finishes. Once the battlecruiser is finished, that should bring us into a profit uh, in terms of our monthly balance. And then we will be all the better for it. Imagine if Sweden betrays you and yeah, I, I honestly, it would not surprise me. <laughs> it would not surprise me. This is random, but can win a 1v1 fight Japan or the Japanese Empire? Uh, we would not do well against the Japanese currently. Um, just given the fact that like they're over here, which means they would be up against our Fi Philippine fleet. And so we would have to fight them with a very minimal fleet. So I'm trying to avoid that at this point. All right, two more months. Just keep it going. Uh, politics.
Okay. We were able to uh, get better relations with the French again. So that has brought them down to essentially slightly agitated, but mostly neutral with us. So let's also try to uh, improve relations with Russia at the moment. This has also given us some uh, naval prestige as well. Looks like Austro-Hungarian is, is doing their thing over here, invading Serbia. Okay, well, let's keep it going. And just like that, we're up over $300 million in the bank. Doubt me. I dare you. Doubt me. Y'all, y'all all be in the chat. Be like, what are you doing? Spending so much money. I got you. Look, it's economics, my guy. Spend money to make money. That's how we got to do. When you ain't got no money coming in because the GDP sucks, you got to sell ships, man. Supplement your income. It's what we got to do. It's what we got to do. All right. So now that that's a thing, uh, we're going to go ahead and increase our budget here for our research a little bit. We still want to keep this going in the positive. We're up to 198% there. So that's good. We're almost maxed out. Next. Did the Chinese just provoke us? Is that what I just saw? What the hell's wrong with the Chinese? Is it because we like the Japanese... Let's keep trying to improve relations with the Japanese. Having an ally seems like a very good idea. Especially one in that part of the world who we know can be very strong. So if we support if we support Japan, that potentially puts us at odds with Russia and China for sure. But they already dislike the Italians. I mean, they've been at war with the Italians. Yeah, they're still at war with the Italians. I'm sure they're very happy that we we absolutely beat the sh out of the Italians. we are making money and we are growing our economy. So all of these things are good. We're up to almost $11 billion GDP currently. And it is currently 1897. What up, Cisco? Appreciate you dropping in, my dude. Yep. Don't forget to punch that like button. Spain is the strong is the eighteenth strongest military in Europe. <laughs> that's that's rough. Let's let's just think real quick. How many countries are there in Europe? I mean, obviously there's a lot of smaller smaller countries over here. But like it's it is funny. It's like the eighteenth largest. That's that's not good considering the size of the country compared to, say, Germany, France, Italy. Greece. Switzerland. All right, so we are making a profit. Barely. I do want to continue to kind of push for a little bit more here. 
just trying to grow our economy over time. Unrest has dropped down a little bit. We're at 13.2. So as long as we're turning a profit, that should start to drop a little bit, I think. Sixty countries in Europe, but yeah, but but if you look at the size of Spain versus the size of the majority of those countries, okay, we were able to uh, buddy up with with Japan even more, so that's good news. Japan is actually allied with Britain currently, so that's actually good news for us. If we could potentially get Japan on board, that actually helps us with the, the British as well. And having the British as an ally would be huge. So let's try to improve relations with the British. See if we can get away with that. Like, getting getting a couple of allies is going to be something that is a necessity for the, the Spanish here. But it can also get you in trouble because it's going to mean that you're kind of, like, obligated to help your allies, you know? So if they're getting into a lot of trouble, then you're getting into a lot of trouble, potentially. Okay. So two more ships will be built in one month. Should be another influx of cash. Not as much as, uh, you know, the battle cruiser, but still, cash is cash. We will be making a decent chunk of money now. We have officially unlocked the Light Cruiser 2 hull. We have also uh, can build up to 4,000 tons. Um, we were able to successfully increase our uh, relations with Britain as well. So we're up to a 54 for Britain, 53 for Austria-Hungary, and a 83 for, for Japan. So we got an interesting dynamic of uh, politics working out here. The other thing is, by buddying up with Japan here, the Germans should start to like us a little bit more, too. Like, if we end up with an alliance with Japan, like, the Germans are borderline alliance with Japan, and so is Britain. Or Britain is, a, is an ally of Japan. So if we can kind of, like, stick this out, that at least give us a chance, you know? At least early on. We can worry about not having allies later on. And I'm sure we'll probably get betrayed by our allies at some point. Because that's a thing that this game really loves to do. But uh, look at this navy that we've built for uh, Sweden, man. That is no joke. Sweden is very, very happy with their Spanish, Spanish fleet. Alright, we do have some finances. So we're just, as always, we're going to try to crank up our uh, research a little bit. Maybe crank up a little bit of our crew training. Just get a little bit more crew pool going. Still at 13.2 on rest, so hopefully we get a thing that will help drop that down a little bit. Okay, next turn. What up, Nito? How's it going? Eli, appreciate you dropping in. Yeah, you got to watch in this game. Allies can quickly turn into a mess. Uh, they tend to pull you into fights that you don't necessarily want to get into, especially early on. Um, so you got to be very selective on your diplom uh, diplomacy, especially in a nation like this. Uh, British Empire is asking a significant financial aid for their short-term naval expenditures, which we can pay them from our own funds. In return... A special trade agreement will increase our GDP in the long term. I mean, that's that sounds like a no-brainer. Uh, it's $25 million, but it increases our GDP by another 1%. So that, that sounds great. Plus, that should help increase our relations with them as well. So if we look... Yeah, we're at 54 on the relationship with... with uh, Britain. We're at a uh, 53 with Austro-Hungary and 83 for the Japanese. The Japanese did kind of laugh at us this last time for trying to improve relations, but we'll, we'll forgive them for now. 
Um, I'm going to let this ride for now and see what happens. Still growing the economy. We're up over $11 billion now, so that's good. How much am I how much oil are we getting? I think it was something like 9,000 barrels per capita, so per 1,000 people. Something like that. All right. So Yeah, so it's 9,000 barrels per capita, so I think I, I think the per capita is like 1,000 people, right? I think that's usually how per capita works, so it'd be 9,000 barrels per 1,000 people. So you're looking at a hundred a hundred million barrels total per month? I see that seems kinda high. Probably kinda high. Somewhere. I don't know. Math is difficult. Y'all can y'all can do the math. Okay. Uh, let's go into ship design. We do have some new stuff to look at. We can build uh, new heavy cruisers and new light cruisers. So I, I do want to take a look at that. Especially the heavy cruisers. So we have the Armored Cruiser 3 hull. The Armored Cruiser 2 hull, which I think is what we already have. This can be built up to 8,500 tons, I believe. Yeah. So, 8,500 tons. It does have some more casemates. But I don't think it's really going to do us much good to build a heavy cruiser at this point. Let's check a take a look at our uh, light cruiser. This is a hi uh, hybrid light cruiser. It might not be the worst idea in the world. Then we have the turret cruiser, which I ain't gonna lie, I do like this quite a bit. We have the semi-armored cruiser, which I actually like this a lot. And then we have the light cruiser two hull, which honestly just isn't my thing. Okay, so this thing is capable of 23 knots. This one is capable of 20 and a half knots. So I think we go for the semi-armored cruiser. Uh, because the light cruisers early on are, are struggling for me. So let's go with like a 20 knot. Okay, so 4,000 tons is our maximum displacement for a light cruiser. Um, we'll go with standard crew quarters. Reduce the range. Front tower three. Rear tower four. In terms of funnels. I feel like this would probably be our best bet. If we get three of these in there. That's probably our best bet in terms of what we're going to get. It's 90% efficient, so not terrible. Um, in terms of how we want to set this thing up, I kind of want to go... Yeah, we can't do any barbettes. That's that's the downside. Um, Do we know the seven inch guns have been pretty effective? So let's go with a seven inch light cruiser. It's only a single turret on each end of the ship, which is not ideal. Um, for casemates, we do have three inch casemates that we can throw in here. Is this the better option?
personally, I would like That gets us a little bit of extra firepower. Let's go with an unbalanced rudder to help us turn. Can't quite put one there. We are now overweight. Hmm. Not much in terms of armor on this ship. Guess that's to be expected. We could make it a little bit slower and then armor it up. Could reduce the range a little bit more. Add a little bit of armor that way. Or... Or we try to go with something, uh, a little bit more moderate in terms of the guns. Go with six inch guns. These will be a lot lighter. Also means they'll reload a little bit faster. Having underwater torpedo tubes also seems like a good idea. They don't have much range, but they do come in handy What up, Real Yeti? How's it going? Red Arizona, how's it going? Viva España? Exactly. Double haul? We can't do a double haul on this, I don't think. I guess we could. I, I didn't think we could, but apparently we can. That's just a little bit too much. Hmm. Pitch and roll aren't great, but it's not terrible. The uh, fore and aft weight offset isn't terrible. Uh, engine efficiency is pretty decent for the year. She's not very well protected. That is, that is the that is the one scary thing for me. I would like to get a little bit more armor on this thing. I 
think we're going to have to drop the speed down to do it, though. Let's go 19 knots. And it gives us a little bit more. And then we can bring this up. Okay, so that gives us a little bit more armor. Put a little bit of armor on the superstructure as well. Engine efficiency is now way higher than it needs to be. Um, which has given us 3,600 kilometers of range. Can we drop weight by dropping these down to a smaller... Can't quite get away with it. That gets us eighty nine point five. Ninety seven point seven percent efficient. I think that's probably going to be the best. That also has brought our four weight offset down a little bit. And that should allow us to add a little bit more armor as well. Not a lot, but a little bit. And every little bit is going to count here. When you have basically no armor to start with. Uh, let's go there. <clears throat> Any extra armor that we can get is going to be huge. What up, Jose? Appreciate you dropping in. Hola from Spain. Please make España great again. Absolutely. Vamos, my friend. Thank you so much, my guy. I will do my best. I, I love these campaigns. I'm not going to lie. These, these campaigns where it's actually a struggle uh, to, to really like get going. I, I truly enjoy these. And I've been looking forward to this. So I'm going to do my best. So in honor of that, Mr. Jose... What would you like to name this class of uh, heavy cruiser? Or a light cruiser, I mean. I'll let you uh, come up with the name. Sevilla? Got you. Or is it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. All right. You got it, friend. All right. So that'll be one design. We're going to go ahead and save that design. Um, I also kind of want to look at potentially a new uh, light cruiser as well, um, we, featuring the other one. I want to kind of see what we can build with this this hull. So this hull is capable of up to 23 knots. So we'll start with a 22 knot cruiser. 
cruiser, we can max out the displacement. Something like this. Um, funnels. Can't quite get four of them in there. So I think this will probably be our best bet. Main guns, if we go with the six inch guns again, put a six inch gun there, six inch gun there. Can't quite get another 16 or six inch gun there. Can't get a six inch gun down the side either. So yeah, I don't feel like this is going to be any any really any better than what we already have. We would end up having to use like 5 inch guns. In the middle. So that would give us a double six inch gun broadside and a double five inch gun broadside. Just kind of want to see what we can do with this. Yeah, no problem, Jose. Like I said, I always try to get everybody involved in chat with when it comes to uh, coming up with names for ships. So uh, anybody that's in chat when I when I do build new stuff is always going to get a chance to uh, potentially name something. So. The problem is, like, is this going to be any better, actually, than the thing that we just built? Probably not. Yeah, I think, I think we'll just go ahead and exit. I think that other light cruiser design is going to be better. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, better fuels yet. We can only use coal. All right, but we do have the Sevilla. So these are $11 million a piece. Um, I want to build a few of them. So maybe build six of them for now. It's 
going to cost us a decent chunk of money, but if we put two at Barcelona, two at San Juan, and then two in the Philippines in Manila. It's going to take 11 months to build them. But these should be better than the current light cruisers that we have. Um, but we do have five more ships to name. So what do we got? The Juan Carlos. Okay. We got St. Teresa. The Trinidad. Got you. What you got for me, Red? You got a name? Got two more names. Aragorn coming in becoming the newest member on the channel. Thank you so much. Welcome to the stream, my dude. La Pinta, La Nina, and La Santa Maria. Yeah. Conquistador, that's actually a good one. I like it. That, that seems more like a battleship name, though. Zin's got the Asite. Is that how you pronounce that? I don't see, uh, I don't see red answering, so I guess we'll go for one... El Petrolio. <laughs> Let's go with La Pinta. All right. So financially, we're losing $5.6 million per turn. That's not too bad. It'll be roughly $55 million-ish. Call it $60 million by the time this finishes. But that'll be some new light cruisers for us. That'll hopefully be a little bit better at countering the enemy light cruisers. Next turn. Sorry, Spanish folks was using Google Translate. <laughs> yeah. Where is an area that we want to, like, this might actually be something, because the lack of uh, funding overall, 
it might be a good idea for us to just go straight into like range finders. Try to get some range finder tech going. I don't want to use too many priorities, but I think it would be a good idea for us. It's currently 4.30, so I will be uh, probably ending the stream here in about a half an hour. Okay. The sooner we can start to hit the target, the better. Yeah, our nations would become very good allies. And we have officially signed an alliance with Japan. <clears throat> what does this mean for everything else? So if we're currently allied with Japan, they are currently at war with the Italians and the Chinese. So we have to be prepared that we might end up at war with uh, China pretty soon. But uh, I think also the Italians would be something that we can kind of punch again. Though I do worry that if we do, do go to war with the Italians now that they will invade from uh, Ethiopia. And they have a much larger army force there. Though I'm assuming that uh, our ally would step in to try to help us. But they also have a 34% army logistics bonus, whereas we have a 7% army logistics bonus, which is not good. Not good. Our ally seemingly has stopped buying ships for some reason. So we got to be a little bit careful with how we spend our money here. The Minister of Finance believes that the fleet needs more destroyers. He is ready to allocate adequate funds for the construction of destroyers. Uh, I mean, that's just easy money. He should better not interfere in Navy's matters. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. We don't need more destroyers at the moment. The Chinese Empire has sent us an ultimatum demanding financial compensation for our discovered acts of espionage. The government is interested in your opinions. Um, agree to their demands? No. Uh, refuse because their rhetoric is unacceptable? Yeah. We're going to refuse. So it looks like we're, we're steamrolling right for a potential conflict with China now. Um, we're at a minus 73. Again, it's not unexpected given the fact that the, Jap or the Japanese are already at war with them. Um, so we'll see. And the Italians are actually allied with them as well. So yeah. It looks like we're we're in a uh, interesting predicament because we're going to end up in a situation where we're going to be fighting 
alongside Japan against both China and Italy at the same time. Definitely going to be heating up. So what is the next thing we're getting? We're getting a Coincidence Rangefinder 1, which should be huge for us. Though, I mean, we're already falling behind in tech, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm going to try not to provoke the uh, Italians, but if we're in a, in a war alongside Japan against China, the Italians are definitely going to start to hate us because that's their ally as well. But we are building six months. We will have our new light cruisers out. Uh, have the Italians built anything major yet? No, they're still at 63 ships. So they, they haven't seemingly built anything. It's just the, the heavy cruisers and light cruisers they started with. Invade Russia? Good lord, man. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen anytime soon. If at all. We'll see. Right now, we just have to try to survive. Like, just, just trying to, like, build up our fleet slowly over time. Build up our economy over time. Like, we will eventually get back on track with tech. And it won't take that long to, to unlock a lot of tech. But... It's just one of those situations right now that we just can't, we can't afford anything. So everything we do is just, and the Spanish and the Japanese. So that's the other thing that drives me crazy. Like they just signed an alliance and then they immediately are like, nah, we don't want your alliance. Kind of annoying. Kind of annoying, but is what it is, I guess. Is what it is. And that completely resets our friendship, too. So we went from 100% and then just all the way back down to zero. That's annoying. That is annoying. All right. Keep it going. Still, still looking at potentially getting into a war with China. Yeah, it's almost the turn of the century. Sweden would like an Espana class battleship. 115% profit. Yes. I can do that. Eight months until we get the new rangefinders. Unrest has dropped a little bit. Naval prestige is decent at 36. Japan only has 11 ships. Yeah, they have 13 ships. Uh, I feel like that would actually be a good idea. Kick them while they're down. Increase tension.
Like, we smell blood in the water. We could potentially go, go after him here. I don't want to send any ships up there just yet because it's going to take a while to get to that point. Look how active everybody else is. Like, you got land battles going where the French are trying to take over Laos. Like, everybody else is willing to, like, do land battles and stuff. My, my country just doesn't ever do it. Like, you'd think these guys would be wanting to invade Portugal, right? Like, that makes sense. Like, you'd think these guys would want to take Portugal. You'd think they'd want to take Morocco, uh, Mauritania. <clears throat> Just try to gain as much territory as possible. But they don't do anything. They just sit there. The only thing that they've tried was this, this over here, and we failed because reasons. Which is kind of annoying. But we're at $11.8 billion GDP, so we're, we're starting to grow a little bit. It just takes forever, man. It takes so long to finally start to make like a decent amount of money in this game. Yeah, trying to be allies with the U.S. is, is or not U.S., but the U.K. is going to be one thing that we try to do here. Um, that gives us another extremely strong power in the neighborhood that can help us out. Um, what is the Chinese Navy looking like currently? 36 sh ships with eight battleships. 24 heavy cruisers and four torpedo boats. They have a pretty large GDP. They're building 14 more ships. Their army logistics is terrible, but they have a 1.3 million man standing army. Our army force has been cut down dramatically. We had almost half a million troops and now we're down to 292,000. Why? Where did we lose all of our troops? We've added territory. You'd think that would increase our troops. Important communique from the Intel Division to Grand Admiral Spartan. Japanese fleet is limited. Advise naval operations. Message ends... Yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Again, I, I'm a little, a little timid about, like, attacking in Asia anywhere because we have a lot of territory over here and very small fleet to, to guard it. So that's a potential for a lot of transports to be sunk. One more month and the uh, light cruiser should be built. Important communica from the Intel Division to Grand Admiral Spartan, Japanese Fleet Limited, advise naval operations. Message ends. LOL. Okay, that saves us some money. We're four months out from our rangefinders.
You used to work in Naval Intel? Nice. Noise. All right. So, just keep it rolling. There really isn't much we can do here. You just got jump scared by a Domino's ad? Sounds about right. What up, Jonathan? When I make a really good battleship, can we name one the Mendoza Warfare? We probably can. I usually try to make it to where you got to be in chat in order to get ships. So just try to try to join us on our streams. El Polo. What up, Jordan? I always just feel like the, the AI gets to, like, choose to do so much more than what our country will do. It's like they're always so aggressive when it comes to, like, claiming territory next to them and stuff. My country won't do anything. We're up over 12 billion GDP, though. Still growing our economy. We're at 199% of our transport capacity, so we could potentially drop that down a little bit here in a little bit. But we're making $4.9 million per turn currently. So I think I am going to spend a little bit of that on crew training and research. So next month we get the coincidence rangefinders, which we will be putting on every ship. We also unlock 16 inch torpedoes. All right, let's go ahead and go into ship design and uh, come up with some refits. So we have the See, let's delete the original light cruiser. Delete the original heavy cruiser. Delete the original battleship blueprint. And then let's do some refits. Time to do some refits, folks. All right, based off of what we've seen so far, uh, one of the things we're going to do is throw a coincidence rangefinder on this thing for sure. Could go double hull bottom, but I don't think it's necessary. Currently capable of 15 knots. So, these 4-inch guns probably need to be replaced with something a little bit bigger. If we can. All right, so for casemates, I definitely want to try to use these five inch guns. And then we will throw some uh, five inch guns
Okay. Now we are overweight. But this thing should be a lot more firepower. So we can drop some of the armor down. Let's drop this down. 10 inches. Actually drop it down a little bit further to get us where we need to be. There we go. Um, can't really do anything there. We do have eight inches of side armor on the five inch guns. That's probably a bit excessive. So let's drop that down. Make these turrets a little bit lighter. All right. I feel like that's a pretty solid refit. So we will save that. All right. Then we want to... Look at our heavy cruisers. Do a refit. These 6.2 inch gun Mark II's are too big to be there. So secondaries. As much as I want those those to be six inch guns, I really can't. They're just too big. So I think we'll stick a couple of five inch guns. All right, now we want to make sure that we put the coincidence rangefinder on here. Um, we want to make sure that we have the unbalanced rudder. Uh, double hull bottom isn't really necessary. These are 7.1 inch guns. Uh, standard ratio increased AP secondaries. Uh, let's go with standard ratio secondary, or actually increased HG secondaries. Um, gun cotton. It's fine. Go with 16 inch torpedo. All right, so that leaves us a little bit of armor that we can throw around. Uh, it's pretty well armored most mostly so i think we're okay there let's drop this down a little bit let's go like nine inches five inch barbette four inch casemate The length of the barrel has been reduced on the 7.1 inch guns. Uh, no, we want the opposite of that. That I'm sure made the uh, guns even less accurate, but it probably made them fire a little bit faster. So yeah, this is showing it would reload in 20 seconds and it a thousand meters is 28% accurate. Whereas if we go back to what it should be, it's a 34 caliber gun, reloads in 37 seconds, but is up to 39% accurate at a thousand meters. 
So quite a bit of accuracy at the expense of a uh, little bit of reload. But it's only a single gun turret too. Um, what if we go with uh, seven inch double barrels? That's gonna cost us weight, obviously. Um, we still want them to be the 7.1 inch guns that we had, but this is essentially doubling our firepower. Um, reload time is going to be 56 seconds, but you get two shots per turret. So now we just got to figure out how we're going to make it work in terms of armor. It already doesn't have a lot of range, so I don't want to drop that down. We can go with standard crew quarters. That'll save us a little bit. Base fuse, standard HE, or standard AP, standard gun cotton brown powder. All right, so we just got to drop the armor a little bit. We've got a 6.2 inch superstructure, which seems a bit excessive, so... Let's drop this down to like eight inches. Drop this down to like three inches. Um, deck armor, we can drop down to like three inches. Okay, that gets us under the limit. Okay, so we're a little bit overweight there. There we go. All right, so that should be a pretty solid refit for this thing. Save the design. All right, now we have our light cruisers which have proven to be pretty ineffective. But if we throw a coincidence rangefinder on, that should help. Uh, also go with 16 inch torpedoes probably will help. Range is already reduced, standard crew quarters, it's all fine. They don't have much in the way of armor, so I would like to try to work on that. Citadel is kind of thick, but that's because they don't have much armor. All right. Casemate armor is fine. Just need to try to come up with a little bit more armor here if we can. That puts us overweight. Go with 0.6 and then see if we can't increase our armor belt a little bit. All right, that's about as good as we're going to get. 
Um, what is our towers? Yeah, I feel like that's going to be better. Minimal rear tower. I mean, technically, we could swap that for this. That would give us a little bit of bonus to accuracy. A little bit overweight now. Let's go. All right. Um, in terms of funnels, I just realized these these guns are legitimately not really capable of doing much. Says that they can aim out over the sides, but I'm not 100% certain that they can. So let's get rid of that. See if we can't do a better funnel system here. Got all the funnels. That makes us more engine efficient as well, which should increase our range by a little bit. Honestly, though, these four inch guns, I mean, a lot better if we can get some five inch guns or even six inch guns for that matter problem is the six inch guns are mark twos and we don't have the room on it Two five inch guns there Can't quite get them in there. So I think we still will end up with four inch guns. But that gives us a little bit higher firepower as well. A little bit more punching power. Okay, we are overweight though. Let's take this down to 19. Still 100 tons overweight. Why not have the 6-inch guns on the middle, or on, yeah, in the middle instead of on the sides? I mean, we could do that. Which would save us some weight. But this also allows us to carry more ammunition by having multiple turrets.
Now it's not gonna let me do it, is it? Sorry. Why is this not... Dude, game. Enough. It's flat out not letting me put them in there. It just let me a minute ago. That's as far back as I can put that. Could swap this out. It's going to hurt us a little bit. I don't really want to, though. I don't know why the five inch guns literally refusing to let us put these here now. Could put a six inch gun here. Still overweight. The six inch gun should reload decently because it's a Mark II, should be more accurate as well. So despite the fact that we only have one of them and the rest are all four inch guns, Shouldn't be too bad. All right, let's see where we can make an adjustment. Drop that down a little bit. that a little bit let's go point four all the way across that allows us to max that out a little bit there all right that should be our refit for our light cruiser okay so now we have the queen anne's revenge let's go ahead and do a refit All right, so these are currently four inch secondaries, which are no bueno. They are not doing a very good job of keeping riffraff at bay. So we will be upgrading those to a larger secondary. Um, for the main tower, I don't, I don't think we have anything new there. Rear tower is
God dang it, game. We got that. Um, let's go with casemates that are six inches. Because these are six inch Mark twos, so they should be a lot more, a lot more accurate. They are going to be a bit heavy, but we can work on that. We also want to make sure that we're throwing the coincidence rangefinder on here. Everything else should be normal. Or we have. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we have anything that's going to be better than the 10 inch guns currently for the mains. Can't put these up there. So we're kind of just stuck with what we got there. Could put a four inch casemate there. Or a five inch. All right, range can be dropped down a little bit. Standard crew quarters is fine. Maximum bulkheads is fine. We don't really care to go for double hole bottom just yet. Standard bulkheads is fine. Everything else should be good to go. So now we just got to reduce a little bit of our armor. Um, let's go down probably 10 and a half inch. Or maybe 10 inch. All right, that gets us where we need to be in terms of that. It should be a more effective platform. Again, the secondary should do a much better job at keeping riffraff at bay, hopefully. Should be more accurate. Uh, the main guns and stuff should be better overall. Well, a little bit. Let's go ahead and save that. Okay, what else we got? That was that. Let's go for the Inquisitor. Let's do a refit on you as well. So we are currently firing eight inch mains. Uh, this seems to be a bit too much. So I think we'll actually drop these eight inch guns down. and go for a seven inch double barrel. Instead, these should have a much better fire rate. Uh, we can make them slightly larger Go for the 7.1 inch. Let's put the coincidence range finders on there. Everything else should be the same. We shouldn't have to worry too much about anything. Secondaries are currently four inch secondaries. Let's see if we can't swap these four inch casemates out for something a little bit bigger. We really can't. That's unfortunate.
All right. So we filled in the rest of our casemates. We've downgraded our main guns a little bit, but that should help us get rid of the light cruisers a little bit more. Only time will tell. Uh, we can drop this down a little bit in terms of armor for the main guns. Make them a little bit lighter. And then we can add a little bit more armor to our ship as well. So we got a couple of hundred tons to play with. So let's go ahead. Uh, deck armor should be decent enough. Let's bring this uh, superstructure armor up a little bit. We can drop this down to five inches. And then bring that up to five inches. Bring this up where we can. All right. So that's probably a pretty good refit for us. Save the design. And now we should be able to uh, check out our battle cruiser as well. I don't know if there's going to be really anything other than uh, adding the coincidence rangefinder to this thing. It does put us overweight slightly. That's fine because we can adjust our armor a little bit to get us under. Let's drop this down a little bit. All right, let's do that. There we go. All right. That should be our refit for the battle cruiser. All right. And I think that's it, right? Actually, we do have these guys that we can put the uh, coincidence rangefinder on. Get that going. We are slightly overweight, 30 tons. Shouldn't be too bad to figure out. There we go. Should be good. And that should be all of the all of the refits ready to go. So let's go back. Please name one El Polo. Uh, I don't think we have anything that's currently ready to be named, but I probably could go with something that that's older these are just refits we've, we've already already built all these ships we were just re, refitting them um, let's go ahead and refit all of these refit the battle cruiser Refit the heavy cruisers.
Okay, we're definitely going to be over our limit, so I'm going to have to chill on the refits. I mean, we're not really at war, so it's not that big a deal uh, to go over the limit a little bit. It's not like I need to hurry these. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and delete the old designs. We'll hold on to the Queen's An Queen Anne's Revenge, the Inquisitor, the Inevitable, the Sevilla. Um, everything else should be good. We're going to be losing a boatload of money. Holy sh... That's a lot of money to be wasted. That is a lot of money to waste. All right, well, in that case, um, let's take all of you, suspend for now. I mean, most of these are only going to take like two months. So it shouldn't be a problem. Just go ahead and go forward. And of course, we get induced draft boilers the moment I, I decide to refit everything. Go figure. Go figure. All right. Now, I will go ahead and name one of these. Uh... Let's name... This one. There we go. I got you. All right. So one more month till a lot of these get uh, reef refitted a couple of months for the heavy cruisers and then we'll have to work on the battleships over time Okay, it'll take 37 months to unlock stereoscopic rangefinders, which is a bit crazy. Um, we take that off for now. Should be able to also drop our budget down a little bit on the res research. Two months left for all of the uh, heavy cruisers to finish their refits.
All right, so we can we can get everybody do uh, refitting. It'll take two to three months, but that'll modernize our fleet as best we can. From a politics standpoint, uh, who is our closest target in terms of like we've been poking the the Japanese for sure. But I still feel like we should probably go for the uh, the Italians. Right. Most of the refits are done. Still working on a couple of the battleships. A person has been arrested with strong evidence that he was spying on our country. The Minister of Foreign Affairs asks you how you should act at a diplomatic level. Uh, it is not yet known from whom he works, so it is advised to hide this matter from publicity. Accuse the Japanese for foreign espionage or accuse the Austro-Hungarians. Probably go with the uh, Japanese here. Press is concerned about our country's defense capability and demands the construction of an additional battleship. All members of the government are gathered to discuss this issue. Um, adding a battleship right now isn't necessary, personally. But, I mean, that's $92 million. Does increase unrest, which we don't want at the moment. Uh, you believe that there are enough battleships to defend our seas? Press should not interfere with the Navy's business. We know our job better than them. I mean, that gives us some naval prestige. Getting some money early on, especially $92 million, seems like a good idea. I'm not going to actually build a new battleship, but they don't need to know that, right? Is everything good on the stream side of things? Like, is every, every everything okay? I'm getting some weird, weird pop-ups, so I just want to make sure everything's okay. All right, we are now making $5.3 million a month, so we must have finished refitting our ships. Beautiful. Uh, we can go back into pumping some uh, budget into... Our tech. What's some other good things that we could potentially uh, be building here? Um, I think we're okay here. Torpedo propulsion might actually... Uh, that's fast torpedoes. Get those in two months. What is this? Tube mechanisms two? Okay. All right, well... 
we'll wrap up this uh, this year's coming to a close and then it's time for me to get ready to go to the gym all right so we have our our uh, GDP is currently at 12.4 billion dollars uh, we are starting to slowly rebuild our armies for whatever happened to them um, from a politics standpoint, we're kind of uh, in hot water with a lot of different countries, which is a little scary. Not ideal, but uh, we'll see how this ends up. But we have some new ships that have just come out. We are still we've added we've added on to our our territory after winning the war with Italy. So pretty happy with the progress that we've made. It's not a lot. I mean, we're not we're not dominating the world yet, but uh, we're we're making slow but steady progress. Mark II guns would be helpful. I mean, we've got the uh, six-inch Mark IIs, but yeah, I don't get to necessarily dictate what guns that uh, are actually getting worked. The Dominican Republic's new leader was found to support armed terrorists. Uh, yeah, hello. That's, that would be huge for us. We must send our fleet immediately. I think the game knows that I was about to uh, call it a day. You ever notice how it does that? It's like, oh, he's about to call it. Hurry, send, send everything. All right, so potential to grab this. That would be huge. That's the Dominican Republic. Uh, that's not. That's not Haiti. The United States is actually trying to take the Dominican Republic, so we're kind of like slipping in, trying to take it out from underneath them. Sure, that won't increase tensions at all. Hopefully, this one will will succeed. Finances have improved slightly. Uh, we are losing a little bit of money right now just due to the fact that we have our, our little fleet in the uh, Caribbean out to try to take the Dominican Republic away from the United States before they take it. But the United States is up to a 25%. We only have a 66% chance to complete this. That is... Not a lot of hope. I don't think we have anything else over here that we can pull from either. It would take too long to get there from over here. So... I, I guess we just got to get lucky. We already lost one that was an 87% chance. So hopefully we get lucky on this one. I think I'll hold off until after uh, we figure out what's going to happen here. Still a 66% chance. So better than not. Better average or better than average chance. Come on, baby. Give us some new territory, please. I believe I'm closing my eyes. Hold my tongue in the right direction. And we failed. Shocker. Unfortunate. All right. Head back to Santiago. Nope, I said go to Santiago. Okay, here we go. That'll get them back into port. It's unfortunate that we keep failing all these, but uh, is what it is. The United States will end up taking uh, the Dominican Republic. Un 
unfortunate. We are losing some money now, but that's again because these guys are sailing. So... Did I know Switzerland has a navy? That's kind of difficult to figure out. How do they have a navy? <laughs> they are a landlocked country, right? Am I crazy? Where's their navy going to be? All right. So we are back in port. Let's take our fleet that's currently in port. Make sure everybody's in B or limited. That should save us quite a bit of money. And now we should be able to keep bumping up our... research budget a little bit to try to get back on track. Has Spartan named a ship Conquistador yet? No, not yet. I figure that's probably a battleship name. So, uh... Eight-inch casemates now. It's not going to do us any good anytime soon. Okay, finances, we are losing a little bit of money. It's fine, though. I'm going to just continue as is right now. We do have a little bit of unrest for some reason. Our naval prestige has also dropped off dramatically. Um, can't say that I enjoy that. Also, apparently... Apparently the Italians don't hate us, but everybody else does. Let's keep increasing tensions with Japan. Japan doesn't have a lot of extra territory that we can take from them. But what they do have is a very small navy, so that could easily turn into some capital ships being sunk for, uh, for them. And then uh, an easy victory. Just get some, some extra cash. Give me back my son. What up, Joey? Welcome to the stream. I'm about to end it, but appreciate you dropping in. The Empire of Japan demands to stop naval activities near their borders as they consider them a hostile action. Uh, I'm going to refuse to comply. So we have common pointed cap shells now. Interesting. White powder has now been come up with as well so that's good um our our growth is still still going up we're almost to 13 billion dollars in gdp so slowly but surely building our gdp up and it looks like the italians are going after sudan now this is what i'm saying like they the it, the ai in this game will do everything for the AI. Like, they, they're the most aggressive people on the planet. They can attack everything. My government won't ever do that. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, we've failed two naval invasion or two conquests that were over here. Why can't we start, like, a conquest where my, ar my land battle or, like, my armies go after some territory? Like, I don't understand it. Like, we have the army that could easily come over and help take Morocco or, or Mauritania.
But they're not doing it. All right, let's keep it going. We'll finish out the uh, the turn of the century here. Get into 1900, then we'll call it a day. Jay, I'm glad you enjoy, man. I really do. Glad you enjoy. Welcome to the stream. Our government wants to organize an international regatta to promote the mutual understanding at sea between all countries. Um, it's $11.6 million. We can afford it. It helps improve our relations with a lot of different people. It also reduces unrest. This is, this is a good thing. Let's go for it. At a press conference, you were asked about recent evidence that foreign espionage targets our Navy. How do you respond This reduces unrest, drops our naval prestige a little bit. It was a matter of constructed rumor made for internal political games. Okay, we can build a 4,500-ton cruiser, light cruiser. It's amazing how quickly we can get some tech as soon as we're able to actually, like, put money into it. It's crazy. Crazy concept. If only we had more money to throw into tech. All right, keep it going. You bought the Atlantico two days ago and you're starting to love it. Dude, it is beast mode. If you bought it, then you have the ability to unlock the commander by uh, completing missions. Small armored cruiser. Kind of want to look at that. Um, yeah, let, let's, let's look at the new small armored cruiser hull. Um, can I join your Discord? Go for it, man. It's the, it's the full Discord server, so highly recommend you guys check it out if you guys are interested in finding uh, people that are all working together. So this is the small armored cruiser. Eh, not much to it, to be honest. So this is the hull that we just unlocked compared to the large armored cruiser, which can be built up to 12,000 tons. We can't quite build that big of a heavy cruiser yet this one though caps out at about 8,000 tons so we can totally build that okay so we can't build above 9,000 tons For a heavy cruiser. So 12.6 looks like it's about as good there as we're going to get. What am I doing? I thought I clicked on the small armored cruiser. This thing can be built out to 7,700 tons. I don't think we need it at the moment. I'm just kind of like glancing over it, seeing what we're capable of. That fits there, but this one doesn't. I 
I don't think that's supposed to work like that. But I'll take advantage of it. Because I can. Uh, what is this hall capable of in terms of speed? 16.9. Oof. It's terrible. That is terrible. Let's go 17 knots. Yeah, we're probably not going to build this thing, but it's worth looking at. Currently, the 6-inch guns are like the only things that are like Mark IIs. Can't put any six inch guns there. Could put a couple of four inch guns up top. Whatever reason, they don't seem to want to go there, but we can put them there. Dude, the camera is driving me crazy. All right, so this is a 17 knot heavy cruiser, but it's actually not a heavy cruiser. It's just kind of a small heavy cruiser with six inch guns that should be decent. Could go with induced boilers, which would allow us to get rid of this. And honestly, we could swap that out probably for this. Kind of want to go with the soft capped HE and try that out. See how that does. Not going to do the electrical turrets this early on. All right, so... Everything else should be good. Let's see what kind of armor we can do for this thing. Uh, we can drop the range down a little bit too. Mm, 
Let's go for that. And then just add some armor. Let's go for like three inches of superstructure. Three and a half inches of conning tower. Two inch deck. This thing's actually going to be decently armored. Okay. Okay. So I think that's going to be a pretty solid armor uh, for essentially a armored uh, armored light cruiser. It's not anything that impressive but it does bring a decent amount of firepower um should bring a decent amount of protection what is our turning circle turning circle is actually really good at 570 meters it's not the fastest thing in the world at only 17 knots But it should be a solid gun platform. What do we call this thing? What up, Hash Brown? How's it going? GT, how's it going? The link is expired. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll have to uh, get a hold of the folks in the fold. Mind Warp, how's it going? Conquistar? What up, X? How's it good? El Nino. El Polo. We well, we did already have the El Polo. But, uh... I'll give this one to you. How about that? So this will be the El Polo class of heavy cruiser. Again, it's not... It's only a heavy cruiser in the fact that it's an armored cruiser. It's not a heavy cruiser in terms of its gun. But the gun should be pretty decent. Uh, am I going to build any of them currently? Probably not. Um, but it's a design that maybe maybe Sweden will, will be interested in. Yeah. As you get up in the, the higher difficulties, it does get a lot harder, especially if you don't have a... Uh, Division, for sure. Alright, so there's our new heavy cruiser, a.k.a. light cruiser. You know, it's designated a heavy cruiser. But I think that's probably where we're going to end it here. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and finish out the, uh, the rest of the year and then call it. Build four of them. If we build, if we build any at all, it would be at least three, uh, because we want one at each fleet, right? We would want one in the uh, Mediterranean, one in the Caribbean, one in the Pacific.
This would cost us $6.9 million per month, which is a large, a large investment, I think we can all agree. But we'll put one in Barcelona, one in... Um, San Juan, and then one. Uh, we actually can't take it out west. So I guess we'll put it in the Mediterranean too. So we'll put it at uh, Barcelona as well. So we'll have two of them at Barcelona, one of them in the Caribbean. What do we call them? We got two names, boys. El Nino. And Conquister. Conquistar. All right, there you go. It'll take 13 months to build them. So we're going to be losing a lot of money for in the meantime. Um, Research-wise, we could probably drop our expenses down a little bit. Save some of that money. In the meantime. El Nino and La Nina. Yeah. All right, GT, appreciate you, man. Uh, I, I will get a hold of the, the guys in the Discord and see why it's it's not working. All right. Yeah, we're supposed to get some pretty nasty weather overnight. Uh, I think the biggest thing that we're looking for is probably floods. Um, I know there's some severe weather that's potentially going to be a thing tomorrow, uh, at least tomorrow afternoon and evening. So I'll keep an eye out. I was thinking about potentially going and storm chasing, to be honest, but I don't know. Don't really have the money to go driving all over the place. even if I really, really, really want to. But let's get to uh, January of 1900, the turn of the century, boys. We are officially 10 years into this campaign and we have done basically nothing <laughs> other than uh, take a little bit of uh, land from Italy and uh, slowly but surely try to increase our, our budget. We're almost the $13 billion GDP. But I think that's where we're going to leave it off. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you again for all your generosity. As always, you guys are always fantastic. Um, hopefully you guys are enjoying this stream. If you are, make sure you guys punch that like button. Uh, keep an eye out. And minimum, it, this stream usually is on Sunday evenings. So keep an eye out for Sunday evening. But uh, also make sure you have notifications turned on because I tend to just stream whenever I feel like streaming. So you never know what time that, that'll be. So... I do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Time for me to go to the gym and get my leg day on. So you guys have a great rest.